If you left the code as I wrote it, so that it creates plots every other time step, your code will run very slowly. I changed mine so that it creates plots every 100 time steps. Also, to reach the sinusoidal steady state, I increased nmax so that it's equal to 3000. Here's the current level that I obtained in the model. There is an initial response to turning on the AM transmitter, and then we reach steady state at around 1000 time steps. We can see that the steady state amplitude is right around 0.5 amps per meter. This level of current could very well be a problem for the electronics on the crane. But what about for people? Well, in the frequency range of about 1 megahertz, current can heat up biological tissue. In other words, if a person is reaching a hand towards the crane, there will be a very high current density at the point of contact between the person and the crane. And this current density will be localized primarily just on the outside of the person's body because of the skin effect of the person's skin and tissue. This in turn creates a very high specific absorption rate, or SAR, SAR, that can cause a rapid temperature rise on the person's hand or whatever is in contact with the crane. But it depends on the person's reaction time and how long they are exposed to that level of current. In this plot, you can see time along the x-axis, and the y-axis the shows how much the temperature will rise in a person's finger or hand assuming an initial contact area of 5 millimeters squared. This size of contact area can be typical. On the bottom of this slide is an example RF burn of about this size. In our case, for the 500 milliamps, we are predicting at the midpoint of the crane, we can see that a current of 500 milliamps will have a very fast rise time in this plot and it will easily get above the burn threshold in a short amount of time. So let's see if we can reduce the amount of current flowing on the crane in order to reduce the chances of electric burns and also to protect the electronics on the crane. Should we try grounding the crane? Perhaps that came to mind, since that should help dissipate the current into the ground and help the voltage of the crane be the same as the ground. Let's try this out. In our FDTD model, this would basically just involve setting the conductivity for the EZ component underneath the crane to that of steel, thereby connecting the crane to the ground. Rerun your code and compare the current you record from the FTTD model at the midpoint of the crane when the crane, when the crane is grounded uh, versus ungrounded.